Over the weekend, I happened upon this Twitter conversation that I thought I would share with you because it touches on philosophy and it also not only invokes banality, but manages to perform it in funny ways. So it's spurred by this tweet, what a subtitle, and the subtitle here is referring to this movie, Hannah Arendt, the subtitle being, The Woman Who Saw Banality in Evil. Now that's a bad subtitle for a number of different reasons. The first of which is that it just doesn't pop, it doesn't come across well. That is not something that would make me, if I didn't know anything about philosophy or Hannah Arendt, say, ooh, I should watch this movie or make my students watch this movie either. It's also not particularly good because Hannah Arendt's viewpoint isn't that evil is all banal. Uh, she's talking about uh, Eichmann, right? And she's writing about this in her reports that later on become Eichmann in Jerusalem. She certainly thinks there's many other kinds of evil. The banality of evil sounds kind of cool, but it's not the most important thing to know Hannah Arendt for. So, you know, this led to a quip, uh, a quote tweet, Kant the man who found things to criticize in pure reason. And now this takes off, right? Because what do we have here? We see that the person is picking up on an aspect of an author's work and kind of trivializing it, right? And poking fun in a rather gentle way. So some of these are what we could call dry humor. Some of these are quite banal. And there's some overlap between the two of them. So let's move on and see what people had to say in response. We begin with the ancient period. We have Socrates, the man who knew nothing. Okay, that's uh, something that we know is in there in the Socratic dialogues that we have with Plato. Then Socrates, the man who apologized. And there, there are actually two different apologies out there, Plato and Xenophon. So that works as well. Definitely not the main thing that we remember Socrates for. Then we have Diogenes, the cynic philosopher, a uh, later generation, the man a featherless biped. He's reputed to have come into Plato's um, teaching place, the academy, and when Plato was defining a uh, human being as featherless biped, he took a plucked chicken and threw it in there and said, there's a man for you. Then we have Aristotle, the man who is rational. Aristotle defines human being as rational animal, so this is trivially true of Aristotle. There weren't a lot of medieval discussion uh, jokes in this case, so we have, this is a good one, Aquinas, the man who summarized theology, referencing the Summa Theologia, and is the summa a summary? Not exactly, but this joke really does work. And then this next one is even better. Buridan, the man with the most famous ass in philosophy. And there is indeed Buridan's ass. It's not a butt, but rather a donkey. So, you know, if, you, if you're not sure what's meant there, go, go ahead and look it up and you'll find a very funny thought experiment. Then we get Descartes, and notice that people made the same joke, and the joke gets kind of stale, I think, the second time around. Every single one of them refers to thinking and being, right? Some of these are exactly the same wording, and there's so much more to Descartes than just, I think, therefore, I am, or jokes about not thinking or anything like that. Moving on, we have German idealism, and we have uh, Fichte, the man who taught science. Then we get two Hegel ones and two Schopenhauer ones. And I think these are pretty decent. Hegel, the man who saw figures of the spirit. Okay, so for a Hannah Arendt-style biography, that might work. 
Hegel, the man with the phenomenal spirit. And that one works on a couple different levels. And then we get Dower Schopenhauer, the man who found the thing in itself, and he does not like it. Then we have Schopenhauer, the man who thinks this is all a complete crap, right? And Schopenhauer is a pessimist, so this kind of makes sense. We also have the, you know, Marx-Engels connection, Marx and Engels, the men who manifested communism. There's a communist manifesto. That's the joke there. Then we have Marx, the man who criticized political economy, and Engels, the man who was not pro-during, because, of course, he wrote an anti-during. And then we, you know, finish up the 19th century, more or less, with a couple Nietzsche quips. And these are pretty good. Nietzsche, the man who is beyond good and evil. That actually wouldn't be a bad title. Then here's a great joking one. Nietzsche, the man who made science gay, referring, of course, to the Fröhliche uh, Wissenschaft, the gay science, we often translate it. And then this one's really good, too. Nietzsche, the man who eternally returned. It's almost the opposite of the MTA, the man who never returned. Nietzsche returns eternally, returns eternally. Then we get some phenomenology. Husserl, the man who went back to the things themselves. Well, that was his slogan, wasn't it? As well as of the phenomenological movement. And then we've got two Heidegger being time ones, which are pretty close together. The man who was being in time, the man who was being all the time. Subtle difference there. I think those are pretty good. And then we'll... we'll get some uh, analytic philosophy in here, right? Wittgenstein, the man who investigated philosophically, just taking the title, Philosophical Investigations. Anscombe, the woman who intended, she writes about intentionality and intentions, right? Strassen, the man who bounded sense. And then finally, Brandom, the man who made it explicit. So those are okay, kind of low-hanging fruit in all these cases. Then we get some critical theory, Frankfurt School people. Uh, you notice that we've got two Marcuse, basically the same thing. The man with one dimension or the man who was one-dimensional. I am really quite surprised that nobody picked up on any of the other weird, wacky stuff that Marcuse has said and done in his time. And then we get from the man who escaped from freedom, almost the exact opposite of what he was advocating. And then, interestingly enough, uh, it looks like Habermas was somehow a big draw. And, and we've got three different ones here. Habermas, the man who saw communication in action, right? He's got communicative action as one of his main ideas. The man who structurally transformed the public sphere. Uh, now, of course, he didn't. He's discussing how it transformed, but good enough. And then uh, the man who found the public in private. Pretty good as well. Uh, we've got three more uh, people, you could say, within the broadly continental tradition. I really like this one. Bataille, the man who accursed a share. You know, that works. That's, it's, it is still, all of this is low-hanging fruit, but it's, that one's pretty funny. Uh, this one's subtly funny. Deleuze, the same, only different constant theme of his work. And then finally, uh, Spivak, the one who spoke for the subaltern, one of the main concepts that Spivak is known for. Then we get a couple that are talking about uh, transformations or, you know, big picture stuff. We got John Rawls. This is as banal as you can possibly get. The man who had a theory about justice. Well, his book is a theory of justice. It's about a theory of justice. <laughs> that is as dry and dull as you can get. Um, Kuhn, the man who structured scientific revolutions. 
pretty good there. And then finally, Lumen, the man who planned a theory of society 30 years, zero cost. So a few final thoughts on my part. You notice that none of these are what we would call uh, in the parlance of the kids these days, bangers. But they are kind of funny. This one did not turn out to be a laugh riot because I think a lot of people did, in fact, go for low hanging fruit. And I think we could probably do a lot better with this. And, and maybe maybe we will down the line. Maybe we'll revisit this and come up with some really funny, some really biting, some really incisive ones. And wouldn't it be cool to do this with movie posters like the one that we've got for this Hannah Arendt, you know, looking thoughtfully off into the distance and the kind of uh, script and verbiage that movie people use. But that's that's perhaps a project for down the line. I hope this gave you a little chuckle, maybe eh, maybe maybe made you think a little bit. Who knows? And that is it for this conversation.